Hello everyone, welcome back. This is KJ4YZI with Ham Radio Concepts. Hope everybody's having a spectacular new year. And I have something here that unfortunately I've had for several weeks and I just couldn't get around to finding the time. But it is new, it is from MFJ, and thank you Gigaparts for letting me borrow this to check it out in video. And you may be looking at it right now and saying, well that's something that you already have, Eric, isn't it? Uh, yeah, actually it is, but not really. MFJ makes analyzers, and you know, I've had a lot of analyzers. I, you might have noticed I did videos on the rig experts and the Antuinos and all these things. I ended up selling all of those to get the money, and I kept this because this always just works. It does what I need it to do. So, I've never, I mean, look, I mean, I still haven't found the battery cover. You know, I don't know where those screws are, but I've already robbed the batteries out, you know, when things need remotes and stuff. But this is what I've been gravitating to for an SWR analyzer to tune my antenna. Why? Because I'm a moron, as everybody says, because I like to tune my antennas and not use an antenna tuner. I tune my antennas. And you like to see what's going on with them. So you can see, is my antenna in band? Is there a short? What about my coax? You can find a lot of videos about my 269C and how I use this to measure coax lengths, find shorts, and I use it as a TDR on coax and more, okay? So that's why I'm not gonna do that in this video. But this video is just gonna show the differences and then prompt me to make two other videos after this about the two new bands that we've had for the last several years. That's what's new about this 259D. And when I saw this at Gigaparts in Huntsville, it was on a display by the door and I walked in and said, oh, they have a new analyzer, didn't even know it. In fact, it was so new that weekend, MFJ didn't even have a box printed yet. They used the old box and put a sticker What's the sticker say? The 259D has two new bands, 100 through 160 kilohertz and 280 through 520 kilohertz. So that is the new 630 meter medium frequency band and the 2200 meter low frequency band. In contrast, you lose the UHF on your analyzer. So let's say you're into those bands, which we'll talk about in future videos and you don't really use UHF. Me, I don't really use those bands. Maybe I will one day, I want to. But for now, my 269C with the UHF is what I use. So um, let's open this up and check it out and, and just give you an overview about it. You can look on my channel about other videos, as I said, testing coax for faults and tuning your antenna for resonance and checking the reactants and all kinds of stuff. And there's, either, there's even a grid dip meter kit that I have that I never used. I'll have to try on here. But in the meantime, let's check out the new MFJ 259D and thanks for Gigaparts for letting me borrow this and I'll be sending it back to them just after this video is done. Ham Radio Concepts. All right, let's look at these side by side. So they look pretty similar, right? And, and again, I'm not gonna go through the video of how to do all the different modes because you can check those videos out on my channel and I'll make this one quick. They look very similar in the front. Power button, your, your analog SWR and impedance uh, meters on both for your SWR and your ohms. And also the same information happens on the LCD screen. So you can see your SWR and at the same time, your uh, impedance and reactance of the antenna, okay? And as you tune, you'll see these, you know, coordinate uh, SWR for lowest uh, reflected power and stuff like that. Now on the top, this one has an SO239 on the top and this 269C has an N. And the reason is because this one goes up to UHF, so for better accuracy at UHF and higher bands, you know, they put the N on here. So that's why I have my adapter. So again, you may not be interested in UHF and you want to experiment with the lower frequencies or maybe, you know, you don't do much in UHF. Uh, I do, so uh, that's why I like um, to keep this one. So you also have a frequency counter input on both of them, which is a BNC, and yes, you can use this device as a frequency counter, okay? And I haven't really used that too much on here. I have a, uh, a nice HP frequency counter, so I don't use this for that much. Also, 12 volt DC power in, you know, with the barrel plug style, okay? And a little ground post. I think this is for like counterpoise and uh, probably your grid dip meter uh, connection as well. So. The top's pretty much the same. The, the front's pretty much the same. Difference is, you can see mine, the lowest uh, would be 530 kilohertz uh, down here, you know, on the lowest setting, whereas the 259D goes down to 100 kilohertz on the bottom. 
all right, and it doesn't go up to UHF. So highest is 232, where the highest on mine is uh, 450 or 470, okay? Now, on the back, they both use the same type of batteries, you know, double A's, of course. Mine's supposed to look like this. I don't have the cover. I lost it. But here's my idea in the future, and I haven't uh, done a video on this, but I've thought about it and mentioned it. You know, having eight double A's, I usually use rechargeables. Uh, I have a lot of rechargeables. My buddy Eric Seaman sent me a bag of them with solar chargers and all that, and I could put them in here and use that, but sometimes you just want a long life, and I have an idea for this. What I'm going to do is, you know, I'm going to find a battery. You know, this is a BioNO 12-volt lithium polymer. This is a little big. But I have a couple of these. This one's for my tracker, and it's got the power pole or whatever. So I'm going to find one. You know, they have them online. Maybe BioNO has them. They kind of look like the size of a phone like this, right? They're smaller, uh, 12 volt, and they have wires coming off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to either find one that fits in there, rip the springs out, or I'm going to find one that fits in the back and run the cord 12 volt right into the input up top. And that thing would last months. I could unplug it here and plug it into the charger. That's my idea. Uh, and if MFJ was watching, man, they really should encompass a uh, rechargeable lithium iron or lithium polymer battery to go inside this thing. But that's what I'm going to do, okay? No problem with the double A's. Been using it like that for years. But I, I, I just thought that'd be fun. If you want to do that and then send me a picture, cool. And I'll just plug it right into the top. So if you don't have batteries, yes, you can plug in 13.8 volt, 12 volt, whatever, in the top to use this, okay? Um, so again, the, the two new bands on this one is the uh, 630 meter medium frequency band and the 2200 meter low frequency band, all the way down to 0.100 kilohertz or 100 kilohertz. Now I asked MFJ, you know, Gigaparts I asked and they just gave me, you know, their idea of it, but I asked the manufacturer, I said, listen, MFJ, what was the reason that you made this? Just so I can know, because you may ask me and I want to know. And their answer was, you know, it's a popular analyzer. We have several different models, but they said a lot of people want to get into this new band. And the AWRL has been fighting for that band, for those two bands for years. And those videos are coming up after this video. But there's not a lot of analyzers out there that will go that far down. There are some, and there are some pricey ones. But your average analyzer goes down to the 160 meter band. So they said there's people that get the model without UHF because they don't have anything UHF. And then there's people that don't have UHF, but they want the new, two new bands. So MFJ said, you know, at a price point of 300 something dollars, I guess, they'll make one that's similar to their classic models that do the coax testing and all that, but with the two new bands. So you do have an option to get an antenna analyzer because guys, those two bands, you know, especially 2200 meters, that is a long antenna. You gotta have a lot of real estate and you gotta have an antenna analyzer that will go down that far. So that was MFJ's idea. So if you're interested in getting into those two new bands or you maybe wanna watch my two videos to understand them a little bit better and maybe you are interested and you're asking, like I've already got comments before, Eric, why would I get the one you have when there's a new model? Well, the new model may not be for you. Maybe you need UHF. Maybe you don't do those two lower bands and they're not for you. So this is your option for those, or they still sell their very popular 269C, and that's what I'm sticking with. This will go back to Gigaparts. Thank you, Gigaparts, for letting me borrow this. I don't need it, so I'm going to send it back, but I wanted to check it out, and they were kind enough to let me. Thanks for watching, guys. Check out the videos coming up on those two new bands, and 7.3 from KJ4YZI.